Tell me what his power level is! It's over 9,000! 9,000? You gotta be kidding me! There's no way that could be right! Don't be so sure. I'll have you know I was trained in the art of K.O. Ken! Anyway guys, so uh, I thought that was appropriate. Uh, as we're reaching 9,000 here. Um, so Bitcoin's bounced off its lows of about two weeks ago at 6,000 USD. Um, there was a bounce of about 30% up at around the 8,000 level. We briefly reached 8,100 and retraced a little and um, we're finally making our way back up. So about 6,000 there, a um, little bump up to 8,300, sitting at 7,700 and then slowly making its way up. So this is a pretty good indication and um, we saw the bounce off at 6,000. A lot of people were calling um, a, a further drop. So I guess a lot of people were expecting a drop even further. Um, I find this kind of interesting because when Bitcoin first dropped or dipped to, uh, it would have been 8,000, people were calling that as the bottom and there was a bit of volume on that bounce. However, it seemed a bit too easy. And um, after we continued dipping, there was people basically saying we're not out of the woods yet, even though we'd bounced off 6,000 on high volume around here. So uh, it just goes to show when the sentiment, especially around Twitter or around social media, tends to be of the majority um, or the majority of people believe that it's going to go further off. Often you'll find that the markets react opposite, the opposite to the expectation. So if everyone expects Bitcoin to bounce off these lows, then the opposite might be true. So um, I hope that sort of makes sense. There's, It's been a very interesting week. I think we are, I think we definitely are starting to recover and um, we will run into some resistance, but I don't think we will be going any lower from here, but I could be wrong. This isn't financial advice, um, just my opinion. Uh, it's been pretty interesting. So the past week, we saw the stock markets dip as crypto also dipped. So I don't think it's a, a matter of correlation, but more causation. So as a result of the dip on the Dow Jones in the, in the wider market, of shares and stocks dropping, I think that's caused the panic and people to sell off uh, their crypto. But as this article sort of suggests, um, the second day round, um, we saw the we saw the Dow Jones continue to dip a bit further. So they had the biggest dip of about five point five point two percent in one single day. That might sound like nothing compared to Bitcoin, but for equities or, or stock markets, that's a lot for uh, for an entire index to go down 5%. So that was the biggest drop in two years. And um, the second time around, crypto markets didn't quite follow. And I think the reason for this is, um, I mean, if you're going to take your money out of stock markets, it's generally going to be invested in somewhere else. And I think that money will flow back into crypto and we'll sort of see this happen um, more and more in the future as um, I think the stocks have been over overvalued for some time now. So it's also very interesting on the note of um, market sentiment. I think we find that a lot of journals or media will talk about Bitcoin taking a massive dip and that it's the end of the world and you'll see a lot of FUD as the price of Bitcoin drops, and we saw this all along from 15,000 down to 13,000 and then again at 10,000. And um, even though fundamentals haven't really changed, there seems to be well orchestrated series of negative sentiment or negative uh, publications around Bitcoin. So here's an example. So we saw, we saw the Korean regulation and then China talking about setting up the firewall and um, banning China, the Chinese from investing on exchanges outside of China. We saw Facebook banning ads and taking a stance there. And this is mostly around the ICO, so I kind of agree with that anyway. Um, 
there. Here's another one. So Bitcoin may not be worth all your hoopla. Um, CNBC seems to be very biased. And um, you, I'll come back to this. This is just the SEC and their stance on Bitcoin. So central bank in Africa, top coin market warns of a gamble. And then there's you know Goldman Sachs coming out and saying that cryptocurrencies, is, a lot of them are going to hit zero which I sort of agree, but I think that, you know, that, that, that title there is very clickbaity and I think it's um, definitely on one hand trying to get more viewers, but also I think they also have their own agendas of trying to sell a negative sentiment. So uh, it's, I mean, on one hand, it's interesting to see these kind of articles because it is it is going to affect your average investor and I, I'll have friends come up to me and say, hey, did you see the article about how Bitcoin's going down and um, people around the office will link me into something and say, hey, you know, I heard Bitcoin's going down. But um, it just goes to show how much the media will affect your normie. Um, but the more you get in, the more the longer you've, you've you become invested in Bitcoin and other markets, you realize that the media often have their own agendas. So, you know, Bitcoin flash crashing below 8,000. And then, um, you know, for three weeks straight in this bear market, it's all Bitcoin's going to crash. It's a bubble. Take your money out of these equities. You shouldn't over invest. People are taking loans out. And it's all very negative. And then it's, you know, suddenly there's a bit of a bounce and the sentiment changes. And, People start making predictions again of Bitcoin once again reaching 50,000 in 2018 and um, the sentiment suddenly gets positive and I don't think that's a coincidence that, you know, three weeks ago, it's all doom and gloom and then this week it's all roses and tulips and everything is perfect again and I think they just, um, on one hand, they like I said, they sell a story but also, on the other hand, they are... Ha they also have their own agenda so they might be acquiring and um, the guys on Wall Street are definitely playing your smaller investors it seems so is a massive one so Goldman Sachs warns of investors of a Bitcoin bubble and um, basically goes on to say that um, the extreme like cryptocurrency is extremely uh, volatile and that you know obviously this was a massive correction and you know we're definitely out of the parabolic stage but we a lot of these articles implied that we're going to zero so you know another one financial review bitcoin is a bubble ponzi and environmental disaster um ceo wary of bitcoin bubble you know you've got these economists these you know people in um experienced positions and large organizations and institutions like big banks and saying you know it's a scam and bitcoin crashes and like um, often the media will misconstrue information basically saying that you know it would be taken out of context so jp morgan will ban cryptocurrency purchases on credit cards but not on debit card purchases so what they're saying is um, they don't want people to take extra lines of credit to purchase cryptocurrencies, which I agree with. I don't think they should ban it completely, but I understand the sentiment and the reason why they would do that. But often information like this will just be, um, you know, written as um, a complete ban from that organization on cryptocurrencies or Bitcoin. Now... So this came out earlier, and this is sort of a few days old now, but the SEC and CFTC um, got together, and the chairman of both these organizations um, put out their stance on um, mm -hmm. cryptocurrencies. So in general, they use the, they use the um, do not harm uh, approach, and this is generally a, a very bullish sentiment in my opinion. So... Uh, the chairman basically says that there needs to be more oversight, but there's no point in um, there's no point in suppressing technologies that are over there, and almost they've got a responsibility to provide um, the technology that is available to us. So, 
Um, but they do both go on to say that ICOs are an area that needs more regulation and they will be cracking down on it more. So I think that's a very bullish sentiment and um, we can see that you know Bitcoin has bounced after this news. So this, I'm not saying this is the reason for the bounce, but this definitely contributed to it, I believe. Now, if we look at Bitcoin, after the dip down here around 6,000, um, there was a bounce first about 7,800 and then this sort of looked like a, a retracement there and um, we've sort of stayed in this range and um, haven't been quite able to break out of 8,500 here and um, just recently overnight we've started breaking out of this channel. Now I imagine there will be a lot of resistance between 9,000 700 and 10,000 as um, you can see back here we sort of just we hovered around here for quite some time in the 10,000 range dropping from this 12,000 range and even before that um, so I'm going to set some sales for Bitcoin as a short-term trade as I bought some around 7,000 to 8,000 and um, I will be setting some trades at 9,500 to 10,000 so we'll see how that goes I've I generally put trades 10% apart so um, that's just uh, I just like to spread out my buy my sales so if one of them gets sold and the other one doesn't um, I, I won't change my sales I'll just set it and decide then and there so anyway um, so some other information um, so put some potential short-term trades I uh, Lisk is a JavaScript cryptocurrency that will um, be doing a rebranding at the end of this month. So there is a lot of hype around that at the moment. Um, this is sort of the roadmap. So they're going to be redoing the website and the app, and also uh, and also the Lisk and Lisk uh, JavaScript. So that's sort of the key takeaways. Let's look at the website here. So Lisk is a JavaScript uh, platform and um, the reason why it's so popular is I suppose there's more Java developers than any other developers out there so this means more people can work on the platform and yeah so events gonna be in Berlin 20th of February so about 10 days from now we've seen a recent rise in Lisk so it's up 26% in the last 24 hours. They will be basically rolling out a new website, front end design dashboard and wallet. Um, they're also looking at releasing their new SDK for blockchain applications. So um, I think this could be uh, this could be interesting. I'm not investing here, and um, I haven't invested in Lisk. However, I thought it might be interesting for you guys. Um, this could very well dump on the day. However, leading up to it, I imagine there w this will continue to rise a little bit. So I wouldn't be surprised to see $40 um, leading up to the event or even $50. So we'll see. Now, the other one that I'm sort of looking at is Stratus, $8.56. So this has been relatively quiet in the last week with the big sell-off but we're starting to see a bit of momentum here now up 20% for the day basically Stratus is an ICO platform with Chash, and um, they, they've they got a very clean website here there's a bit of development there I don't know too much about Stratus however I do know that they are releasing two new ICOs and they've got two big partnerships and it's one of the uh, old coins that have been around um, a little longer than some of the other ones in the top uh, 50 here. So two partnerships are with Gluon and C-Hash Corner. So basically Gluon is an automotive industry um, and they were using blockchain in US, UK, India and Sweden to basically get data for vehicles, uh, diagnostics and basically using that information, storing it on the blockchain for cars and vehicles um, and basically benefit, benefiting it from there. So I haven't done further research than that, but it does look pretty promising. Um, 
The other one is C hash corner. So something you guys might want to look into. I'll definitely I'll post it in uh, at the bottom of the video, and you guys can check it out. Now going forward with Bitcoin, I think that we will see some resistance at ten thousand. Um, I'm just uh, like most of you, I'm pretty pretty glad to see the markets are up today. Um, I hope that no one has panic sold and they've held their positions as um, you can see that we'll definitely oversold. Um, not saying that we can go we won't go down further, but it is unlikely here. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. There wasn't too much to cover. I will discuss some other um, short term trades in my next video and uh, I hope you guys enjoy this. Remember to like, subscribe, and uh, show your support. Thanks. Thank you.